Hello, hello, welcome back to my channel. I am Dr. Lisa DPT and I'm a physical therapist. Today I'm gonna to be talking all about my half marathon training, how it's going, things I would change, and things that I am keeping the same because they are working. So if you don't know my story already, about, I almost said a couple years ago, but it was actually like four years ago that I trained for a half. I had been running before, but I hadn't really been preparing for a race like I took some time off and then just jumped right into my training plan which was a big mistake big mistake the other big mistake I made was I was only running like only running no strength training no mobility I would take rest days but I was only running and kind of sticking to that running training plan ended up getting injured pretty quickly and decided okay I need to do something different because that obviously didn't work so Fast forward a year, I don't know, not very good of a time. Maybe it was two years, but I started strength training and rehabbing myself and realizing, okay, something can be done. Like I don't have to just not run because I enjoy running. So I started strength training, started doing mobility. Then last year I ran a half, which was my goal to complete it pain-free. I did that, yay, I also did a PR, which was great, yay. Um, but the big thing was I finished so strong and pain-free, which I was like, heck yeah, this is all I wanted. And I really contribute that to having a routine and sticking to that plan. So having a training plan, it can be custom. You can have someone make it for you. You can find something online. But the biggest thing is to be flexible with it because I remember last year I had like the six weekends before my train, my race were like weddings and events and stuff. So I had to be super flexible with my training. So I'd usually do my long runs after work Friday. So just know like you have to be a little flexible with it. I'd always get my runs in throughout the week. No excuses there. I might just switch them around in terms of like what order I did them in. The other thing, so now fast forward a year, it's 2022. I am six weeks, I'm on week six of my 12th. 12 week training plan so I started it and then I got COVID took a little bit of time off a couple weeks off to build my endurance and then here we are I'm finally back on week six and it's going really well no hip pain no hip discomfort which has always been like my weak spot or I guess injury prune place as some may say but some things that have really worked for me that worked last year that I'm just carrying over into this year include mobility training every single day. I have another video on it that you can follow and it's basically just 10 minutes of flowing through a dynamic movement to work on your joints range of motion. That has helped a lot. Do it every single night, take 10 minutes right before bed and no excuses there. The second thing that I highly recommend is strength training. I preach on this, but please understand that when you're doing strength training, while you're training, it needs to be a different type of strength training. It shouldn't be trying to max out and build, build, build a ton of strength because you don't wanna be super sore the next day when you're running and your main focus is on running. So two days of strength training, I make it more of like a maintenance, is my goal so nothing super crazy i'm not really pushing the weight i'm just doing it more maintenance so i do that on the two days that i'm not running and it takes like 30 40 minutes it's nothing crazy i'm really focusing on control quality of movement and really trying to see if one side feels different than the other and i use the runner's complete program for that and i use the runner's complete program for the mobility workouts as well um, the other thing that I've done this year that's a little different is I'm running in the morning. So running in the mornings has allowed me to pick up my pace, really be like focused on my run, like first thing versus I used to do it after work. So I'd only be thinking about work. By the way, if you're running in the morning, I love this Knox gear light up vest. It's super comfortable, but it also keeps me lit when it's dark out and I'm running in the morning. So it makes me feel a whole lot safer for when cars are passing by. So I will link it below if you're interested. So the fact that I'm doing it early in the morning has helped a ton. Um, it's also helped with just like my motivation to complete my run. I'm having way more good runs than bad runs. Going along with running in the morning, as I said, my mindset has shifted a ton. 
Like this year, I'm just trying to focus on enjoying my runs, enjoying the freedom to run outside and not be in pain and really just like shifting that mindset of focusing on like my pace. I used to focus on my pace a ton and like really get down on myself. But this year is all about just enjoying my runs, enjoying the journey. And here's the trick. The last thing that I've done this year that has really taken my running game to the next level, in my opinion, because again, I'm comparing it to myself and my running journey, is focusing on my running form. So I used to have like a little bit of hip ache. I'm not gonna call it pain. It's like two out of 10 on the pain scale. And it'd be on like the lateral side. It'd come on longer runs or maybe a big mileage week. And it would usually come like after or if I tried to sleep on that side. Um, so I started addressing my running form because I could feel a ton of movement going on on that left side, which is where my pain was or discomfort was versus my right side. Like I would just put my hands on my hips when I'm walking, I could feel the left side just so unstable. So I really took that into consideration and said, I gotta fix this. If I wanna run this race and I wanna finish strong again and I wanna be proud of myself and feel confident in that race, I need to address this because clearly this instability is causing some sort of discomfort and if I just keep increasing my mileage, it's just gonna keep causing more discomfort and more discomfort. It's just not gonna go away on its own. So I started addressing that. I started doing a little bit more strength training that was geared towards that and some of the impairments that I found, but also tweaking my running form a little bit because I could see that I wasn't getting into full hip extension because of the tightness in the anterior side of my hip. So I started just tweaking my running form a little bit, increased my cadence, and that helped a ton. And now I feel like way more efficient. I feel like I can just like run for a very long time without being like completely just exhausted. It's really helped my running efficiency, which plays into your running performance. So it doesn't hurt to just tweak your running form. That doesn't need to be a thing until after the race. Just a couple cues might help, um, but I'll cover more on this in some later videos. But those are some tips I have when you're running a race. Um, you can use it for like a 10K, you can use it for a marathon or any races that you have. I just suggest like really sticking to your routine and if it works, then just keep it as is. 